Morning. Welcome to the shed. It's been a while. I'm sorry about that. I've had uh, stuff on with, uh, you know, work commitments and various other things going on. So this is a Stanley number 71. Uh, I bought this at the local Antiques Emporium. Been looking for one of these for a while, but they go for a lot of money. Uh, one of these with the box and three blades or three irons of different sizes go for about 150 quid. I paid 62, I knocked them down from 68, but it's only got one blade. But I think I can probably manage with that. So we're gonna, I mean, it's gonna, this is for my collection, this isn't gonna be sold. It doesn't need a lot of cleaning up really. It's just a sort of nickel plated covering which we can soon clean. Not sure what to do about the knobs, may leave them, may just take the finish off and uh, give them a little varnish. Anyway, this is uh, what's called a router plane. It's used for cleaning out uh, tenons and making dados in, in a piece of wood. Uh, in a moment, I'll bring you over to the table and we can I can show you what you use it for. Then we'll strip it down, clean it up, put it back together. The only thing being, not sure what to do about the knobs. I may just leave them, not sure. Okay, let's crack on. So the um, plane consists of the sole. This is a little fence, which we're gonna take off there. I'm just gonna show you how to use it. Well, I say show you how to use it. I don't really know, to be honest, because I've never used one before. So we're discovering together. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the original screw, which is a bit of a problem. Okay, so this consists of the sole of the plane, the iron or the cutter, and then this is like a sort of extra, um, I think you can have it open-throated, so you can take that out and it'll be open throat. I don't quite know why you would need that. Uh, and then this is also like a depth gauge as well, so you can adjust that or flip it over. But I will pull that out of the way for the moment, I think, and work out how to do that later. So let's adjust the blade, which you can do by slackening off here, lifting the blade using this small wheel. And you need... This blade is actually in pretty good condition. It's quite straight. It's, in, it's parallel to the, the, the sole of the, the plane and it's reasonably sharp. That has to be parallel and level with the sole to get a good clean cut. So I've got a bit of scrap wood at the moment. I'm not taking anything off there. Try a different side. So you basically just take that down until you actually so take it off, down a bit. There we go. So we're now cutting. So my cut is actually quite level. So I think that's a good sign. It's not particularly sharp, that's the bad sign. So um, yeah, I'll strip it down. We'll sharpen the blade and we'll try and make a dado and I'll show you how it works properly. Sorry, I got the heater on in here because it's bloody freezing. So when you're cleaning up one of these, any of these planes, the thing to do is strip them right down. I'm not quite sure why that hasn't come out of there. Remove everything. This is in pretty good, pretty good nick really, it doesn't need a lot of work.
bloody freezing in here as well. It's cold out, raining, feels like it's going to snow. It's Thursday morning in the UK. Not a very nice day. I've got some new music uh, to use on my uh, videos from a guy called, well I don't know what he's called, but his, his channel is Wintergarten. He make, he's made a massive marble machine worth checking out. I'll leave that down below, a uh, link down below so you can have a look at that. But he's done, he does a free download of music, so I'm gonna try that some on my background, so you'll notice a bit of a change on that as well. So these little uh, keys, I think are all the same size, so I won't get them mixed up. Not quite sure what the throat stop is for. I'll have to look that up. Uh, okay, so take this off. So this collar holds the blade in position. I don't think we've done that right. There you go. So there's the iron. That's not been used much. Won't take too much to sharpen it. Although the only problem is it won't go in a jig. So we'll have to find a way of doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. Take the nut off, adjust the screw, and then this little collar is what you use to tighten it up. There are one or two marks on the bottom here, so I think we'll start by getting that on a bit of flat sandpaper and just make sure that that's dead flat. Okay, let's do that. Uh, I need a little box for those bits, because I will lose them. got a sheet of 1200 grit paper here which is probably a bit light but I really don't want to do any damage so I'll just go gently first of all see if we can see anything on there Switched some 400, the 1200 is too, too light. I can feel a couple of little nicks just here, but I don't know if they're even raised, but this will take them off if they are. Okay, there was a bit of a high spot there which I've taken off. It's nice and smooth. Okay, over to the Y wheel and we'll give it a clean up. This stuff should come up nice. It's a bit, it's just grubby really, it's not got any rust as such. Just needs cleaning. Let's do it.
yeah no I need something to get into those bits there I wonder if some kind of chemical might do it so I'm gonna go and buy myself a little mini wire brush I think and that's the only way I'm gonna get in there So that's all the nickel plated parts finished off. Um, there's one or two spots where the nickel's starting to come away, but not. It's quite thick, so there's just a little tiny corner there where I can see it's. There's nothing I can do about it anyway, as long as it's flat, that's fine. Okay, now we'll do the rest of the screws. I won't do these on camera, but you get the basic idea. And then I've just got to decide what to do with the knobs. I'm going to go and get a uh, small wire brush just to do the the main body which I tried washing with a with a solution of detergent and uh, a brush but it didn't work I need to get a, an actual wire brush in there. I had a look on eBay these um, uh, blades irons is the correct word go for about 25 quid for two so I won't be buying any but I will look out for one I'm sure I'll find one sooner or later this one's uh, I guess that's a quarter of an inch isn't it uh, I need a half inch one really, but I can manage for the moment. But I'll look out for them. They'll probably end up in somebody's car boot box because that's the sort of thing you're saying, what the hell is that? And just chuck it away. So I'll let you know if I find one ever. That's all the metal parts processed. These come up nicely. I have still some work to do on the body, but the little sort of um, collar come up nice. Well, pretty good really, quite happy with that. Of course, I didn't really need to do this because it would have worked perfectly okay as it was, but it's kind of nice to do. There you go, that's all those laid out. I didn't do that screw. Do that out. Just a quick bit of work to do on the body and we'll see what we're gonna do with these knobs. I'm still not sure. I think I'll take the finish off and then just to re-varnish them. I changed my mind again. I'm going to give them a little tiny coat of varnish just to freshen them up. cold varnish. Must be cold in here. Bought myself a new little wire brush. So that does the job, gets right in the corners. I think that looks pretty smart. 
I don't think we need to go any further than that. Just got to wait for the paint to dry or the varnish to dry and then we can reassemble and sharpen. So it's night time now. Uh, my varnish still isn't dry so I'm going to attempt to uh, flatten the bottom of this foot. I mean it's actually flat, I just need to um, clean it up. So I think I should be able to do it by hand because I can't get it into a jig. So I've got my stones, I've got my 280 grit. Really it doesn't need to be very fine, but I'll probably do it to the thousand. That's a lot of water needed. The amount of water these things suck up is amazing. I think you're supposed to put them in soak really. But I'm sure this will do. Okay. Got to keep that dead flat. Not going to be easy. So now I can already feel that my stones are out of level. More expense, I've got to buy a, a diamond flatting stone now. See anything on there? That's weird. Now a thousand grit. Should be plenty, really. You go we've got a sharp blade there put a tiny tiny bit of a shine on the back and got the micro bevel there so that should now cut reasonably well yep that'll be okay when that's mounted i think that'll do the job excellent okay next step is to assemble it or reassemble it and give it a test not easy though so it is the next day, um, pretty happy with how, how all of it went apart from the knobs. They've been curing for 24 hours nearly and still a bit tacky. So I'm going to put it together as it is and then come back to those another day. I probably will have to strip them. Obviously what I was doing didn't work right. Should be an easy reassemble if I can remember where everything goes. Start off with the knobs. One, two. Actually, probably should start by pushing these in. You can see it looks pretty shiny compared to how it was 
when I purchased it. Knob one, knob two, screw. So the iron goes in here. If I get this the right way around. That's the collar, the sort of uh, clamping collar. which obviously has to be loose to fit in there. So that's the little adjuster wheel. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm not going to put the little fence on underneath because I don't need that, uh, but I will put the depth gauge and throat thing. I didn't actually look out. I was going to look up what it was actually for, but I'm not, still not really sure. I'm sure it's got a use. That's it, it's done. Not difficult, was it? But it does look really, really nice, actually. What do you think of that? Okay, I'm gonna set up a bit of wood and we're gonna have a go at cutting a small dado. Okay, I've cut a couple of channels in this piece of oak. I'm just going to take the waste out with a chisel, or most of the waste. Not sure if you can hear me. Just going steady. where you find out if your chisels are sharp or not. First time I've used this properly. It's not brilliant, but it'll do. So let's try this plane. So basically the plane is doing exactly the same thing. It's routing out any, any wood waste, effectively like a chisel. So let's take it down a smidge. I've got a bit of waste wood at the back there, so I could, if I was doing it, um, so less slacken off, down half a turn. Now if I had a proper bench, 
this would be easier. You can see that that is taking that down. Again, I think it could be sharper. Slacken off, half a turn. That's it. I think the idea is not to go too far in one go. That's now fairly level. Slacken off, half a turn or even a quarter of a turn. Sliding. Slacken off, quarter of a turn. Probably should turn it around. time I went too deep and messed it up. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a nice clean channel, flat bottomed, which is the, the key. Could be sharper, but that's probably my sharpening technique rather than the tool. So there you go. It does work. So my next thing to try is to actually use that on a real joint. Uh, and in a later video, I'm going to try my first ever mortise and tenon joint using a bit of this quite hard oak. Can't be that difficult, can it? Okay, thanks very much for watching. You've seen me restore this. It come up really, really nice. Almost good as new, not quite, but the only problem I had was I wasn't very happy with the knobs, although I think I'll probably just live with them. It is gonna be in my collection. I don't need to, to worry too much. Very useful tool. I think it takes a little bit of practice to get a good result, but there's not really anything wrong with that, is there? That will make a joint. If I had a better cleaner cut, that would be good. Okay, so the next time you'll see this, it will probably be me trying to do a, um, a mortise and tenon joint, which could be a laugh. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been to the market this morning, so there's lots of uh, exciting tool reviews coming up, things that I've bought, things that need doing up. So that's great, thanks. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all of that stuff. Thanks for watching, see you soon.